Hello, it is Sunday, August 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday puzzle today, so we have an extra large grid to solve. It shouldn't be as difficult as the last two days. Those were very tricky, but uh, but it is a big grid, so it may take a while nonetheless. Uh, so it goes on Sunday. And this extra large edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Joe Percy, Jake Rodkin, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks as a benefactor and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at Daily Solve, sorry, at patreon.com slash daily solve, or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, if you join the Patreon campaign at any level, you get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up in the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, such as the most recent New York Times acrostic puzzle I solved, which took me a while. I thought I was getting good at acrostics, and then this one really challenged me. But it was an interesting solve. I was constantly revising my entries in the grid, rethinking answers, sort of using positions of letters to infer other letters. It was very, very, very interesting, uh, but quite difficult. <laughs> anyway, that's up there if you're interested in that. And... Today, we will be solving the Sunday puzzle, of course. This is entitled Letter Play. As a Sunday puzzle, it has, it has a title, and it was constructed by Tina Labati in her debut New York Times construction and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Homes that may have butlers. Manners, perhaps? A stately home? Colorful parrot. A macaw, maybe. And Santa blank. Santa Anita, maybe? Bear or boar? Well, that's interesting. Um, hmm. Bear or boar? I'm not sure. Let's keep going. Jazz singer born Eunice Kathleen Wayman. Don't know. Might recognize the name after I see some more crosses. Warning sign. An omen, maybe? Uh, an om you could consider an omen to be a warning sign, maybe? If it's something's been foretold. Commercial following of dash O. That looks like O-Rama. It's the sort of thing um, you don't see as much now except in ironic contexts, but certainly in the mid, mid century, maybe into the 70s. Um, blank O-Rama. You can see that kind of thing. Cyclo-Rama, things like that. A game or B ball, e.g. Um, so B ball is basketball, but A game is just a general term referring to bringing your best. So what is this? I'm not sure what that means. Slang, maybe. Maybe. Yes, that might be it. Oh, bear or boar is an animal. Okay. <laughs> I was looking for something more specific than that, but apparently not needed. The C of AMC theaters is cinema, right? AMC is a major... Uh, cinema chain. And Santa, this does look like it's maybe Santa Anita. And time was, you might say, time was, um, I was solving a smaller crossword grid. It was yesterday. Not true. Question mark. Not true. So, oh, all right. So true in this sense means true in the sense of uh, a plane being flat or two pieces being joined um, properly. So not true means at an angle, not at a, at a true sort of straight relationship. Okay, not looking good. Not looking good. Not sure, concedes, maybe gives up or doesn't really fit usefully. Not looking good, why don't I see what that is? What about this, introductory courses? And here we have the U of the song lyric. I'm begging of you, please don't take, take my man. That is Jolene by Dolly Parton, the great Dolly Parton. If you, um, Jolene was a uh, song got a huge amount of play a few years ago because people noticed if you slowed it down, it sort of became kind of eerily melancholy. Anyway, unrelated to that, just because Dolly Parton's on the mind. Um, the song I Will Always Love You by well, by Dolly Parton, but recorded most famously by Whitney Houston, 
Uh, Whitney Houston's recording is great, but you should definitely listen to um, Dolly Parton's original recording of I Will Always Love You because I think it's just absolutely incredible. It's a really, really wonderful, wonderful recording. Anyway, and it's just not as well known, which is why I mention it. It's worth seeking out. Singer Dylan of the Wallflowers. Mm, I actually don't know. I sort of remember when the Wallflowers, the band was around, but I couldn't tell you the name of anyone in that band. Supporting Beams probably ends with an S. Struts, maybe? Some genealogical work. Yeah, maybe it is struts, because this could be gene family trees, genealogical trees. And Gregor, oh no, it's not struts. Gregor Blank Kafka protagonist. This is the protagonist of the um, Metamorphos of Metamorphosis by Kafka. Um, Gregor Samsa is the character's name, who gets turned into an insect. And then... I wonder if this trees is correct. A gleaming. Could be a glare, maybe? Maybe a gleam, a glare? Uh, Sebastopol is its, uh, is its largest city. Um, Crimea. Yes, there we go. Certainly in the news recently. Um, pioneering, pioneering mail order company, Sears, in the United States. I think Sears is out of business now, but it's a sort of a... a uh, hardware store and then kind of became an everything store with a uh, famous mail order catalog. M to Einstein is mass. So that would be in, I guess, associated famously with Einstein and E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the constant C, the speed of light squared. And pelvis bone. Ilium, I think is the answer. D and D monster. I mean, it certainly looks like ogre to me, sort of fairy tale monster, and that would, in this context, Dungeons and Dragons, the role playing game. Oh, supporting beams are joists, right? Joists or um, studs, also also called. Um, okay, so in your wall, for instance, you could have, you could find a joist to uh, you can mount something on it. Anyway, where one might turn on the jets, a jacuzzi, which. I think is a brand name. Has that become fully generous, legally genericized at this point, or is Jacuzzi still a brand name? I'm actually not sure, but it's a hot tub anyway. And visitor to a website in analytics lingo. Something user. Don't know. Santa Blank, California. Oh, that's funny. We had Santa Anita over here and Santa Cruz here, which is a city in California. Sauvignon Blanc. So that's a, um, a white wine about which I couldn't tell you much more than the fact that it's a white wine, as evidenced by the name, including Blanc in French. Um, I'm not educated enough about wine to really know, but I have heard of it, certainly, and I'm sure, I've, I'm sure I have consumed it a fair few times. Oh, Jacob Dylan of the Wallflowers, maybe? Let's see if that works. Part of the knee for short. Oh, the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. <laughs> so I think I learned from this crossword, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I've sure I've heard that phrase before, but I know I have, but it was recently via the crossword that I decided to try and actually not forget it instantly. DIY buy, so do it yourself buy. Hmm, not sure. Magnum PI setting. I've actually never seen Magnum P.I. Don't know. What about this? Bees, e.g. And the whole package, colloquially. All that? Oh, maybe this is Oahu. I kind of wanted it to be Oahu because it just seemed like a place where you might set a show like Magnum P.I., but I had no idea if that was the case, so I didn't mention it, but it looks like it might be, Oahu being one of the islands of the state of Hawaii in the United States. So bees, e.g. Um, oh, you have bees, the insect, obviously, and then you could have bees as in a spelling bee or a quilting bee or something. Is there anything else it could be? Probably ends in an S. Mixes together, stirs. That's fair enough. Oh, unique user, visitor to a website in analytics lingo, right? I see. Yes, it's valuable when analyzing web traffic to consider how many unique users you have as opposed to how many total visits. Control Q is a common shortcut to quit on computers. 
on Windows computers, I suppose, in particular. And XL or 11C, either one of those is a size. And of course, because uh, for clothing or shoes or something. So uh, because this is an or clue, we ha bear in mind that even though there are two sizes listed, we're only referring to either one of them, XL or 11C, so single size. And a World War II, sorry, World War I helmet informally. Um, World War I helmet informally, a tin, tin can or tin jar or something like that. And I know infantry, members of the infantry are sometimes referred to as jarheads, but I don't know if that has any relevance to this particular word. RNA polymerase, e.g. Oh, this just came up two days ago. That's funny. Does that help me answer this clue? It doesn't seem to. Um, w2 for one. That is, in the U.S., a, a tax form submitted to the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. And W-2 is the one issued by employers to their full-time employees. I guess maybe it doesn't have to be full-time, but it's but it's employed work as opposed to self-employment. Anyway, beer named for a founding father, Sam Adams, is an American beer brand uh, named for one of the U.S. Uh, founding fathers. And Oh, Nina Simone, jazz singer born Eunice Kathleen Wayman. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Nina Simone, Eunice Kathleen Wayman. I probably won't remember that, but maybe if I encounter it one or two more times, it will etch into my brain. Nina Simone, obviously, just absolutely legend, legendary singer. Uh, DIY by. Okay, so what is that? I'm not sure. Circuit? I don't know what that would be. Introductory courses. Here we have concedes. Grants. Yes, I grant you the point. I concede the point. Not looking good could be grim. It's a grim situation. Think creatively would be ideate to come up with ideas. So here we have, oh, introductory courses are salads, intro, um, introductory courses of a meal. And then bees are socials, right? Okay, so like a quilting bee in that, the one I, example I mentioned, you could describe it as a social. And then DIY by is CIT. Hmm. So I'm wondering if singer Dylan of the Wallflowers is incorrect. And DIY by sit. Could be kit. You buy something, you buy a sort of do-it-yourself mounting kit for hanging paintings or something. I mean, that would allow. That would allow, that would be probably Jacob as a given name rather than a surname, which is what I was imagining. Jacob Dylan. I mean, it's just as plausible as Dylan Jacob with a C. So it's probably the answer. I'm going to move on. First couple of the early 1910s, the Tafts, President Taft, President Taft and his wife, I suppose, whose name I don't know offhand. Um, and first, I guess, meaning just that they're the first couple the in the U.S. presidential couple. Uh, shut your traps. S shut your trap. Sorry, singular. Um, stop it. Wouldn't really say. I wouldn't think stop it is the same as shut your trap. What about this? DST starting time or a hint to Sam Adams. Daylight saving time. Daylight savings time starting time or a hint to 42 across. What on earth does that mean? Anyway, when does daylight saving time start? So it says starting time, not starting date or month. So I think, is it 2 a.m. maybe officially when the time actually changes? I think it might be. Shut your traps, stow it. Yes, that looks right. War down, eroded. Why is that? Oh, it has two a.m.s in it. Oh, that's funny. What an arbitrary thing. So a.m. and a.m. Right, Sam Adams. Okay. So that sort of confirms my suspicion about the time. Bone filler, filler marrow, you've, uh, ma bone marrow. And Libya's Gulf of Sidra. How to go to a manual, I guess. Royal bird is a turn. I guess there must be a royal turn. I mean, I've heard of turns, but uh, yeah, there must be one called the royal turn, something like that. Oh, 23rd in a series or a hint to 27 across. Right, so here we're doing it again. 
So double, oh, is it W? Is it the 23rd letter in the alphabet? Mm. Mm. But there are three U's in this. Oh, hmm. I don't understand. Let's check the crosses and see if W is correct. Personal story informally, a bio, biography. Keen. Um, keen could be I'm excited to do something, I'm keen to do it, or it could mean keen as in sharp or avid. Uh, hmm. Oh, right, here's the RNA polymerase again. What about this one? Number two on a table. Number two on a table. With the second element on the periodic table, maybe? I, um, I don't know. It's a gas, I guess. Uh, bone dry. Sear, maybe, or arid? Oh, if it were arid, then tin cap or tin can would, would each work. Weightlessness or a hint to 118 across. Okay, so this is certainly what's going on with our theme. We have these letter hints dotted around the puzzle that point to other clues. Blank Compton, first woman to cover the White House for a TV network. Interesting, but I don't know. Anne, I guess, probably. Thailand once. Oh, Siam. So it probably is Anne. River through Tuscany, the Arno. TV Tavern, Moe's from The Simpson. Is, um, 2004 Will Smith sci-fi film. I, Robot was a Will Smith film, yep. Apply with a Q-tip, say. You could dab something with a Q-tip, a, co a brand, cotton swab brand. Kerfuffles could be a do. It's a whole kerfuffle, a whole could do. Whole a do. And then here we have BC neighbor, British Columbia neighbor, so the um, uh, Canadian province of British Columbia neighbors the state of Idaho in the U.S. And then rating rating unit, a star, right? And uh, so rating a film, for instance, or a restaurant. Reaches, attaining, or reaches, attains, right? Sorry, An easier match than I was making it. Mimic is an eight maybe someone who apes. So mimic could be a noun or a verb. And if it were a noun, it could be several kinds of, it could be more than one kind of noun. But in this case, I think it is one and it refers to someone who mimics things, an aper. YouTube or Gmail, you could call those apps. I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally call them apps. I would call them services with available associated apps, but that's just me. Few feeling relief. Top credit rating or a hint to 25 across. So 25 across is at an angle. That looks like there are two ands in there. Top credit rating. I mean, triple A is, oh, right. Okay, that's the answer. Right. I was going to say in, in rating bonds and things like that, um, a triple A rating is, a, is, a, is the strongest rating for a bond. So yeah, that looks right. So it wasn't the double and, it was the triple A. I'm so confused about this double U. Double E U? No. That wouldn't be correctly spelled anyway. I don't know. Very confused. Maybe it's something else. Uh, have we not seen anything over here? I wonder if this is. I wonder if this is John Dick, the journalist John Dickerson's mother. Anne Compton. I'm not sure. Anyway, engraving instrument, a stencil or a what? Whirly bird whirlers, rotors. So sort of a way to refer to a helicopter or helicopter-like device, like a gyrocopter or something would have rotors that whirl around and uh, give it lift. Trust in, rely on. If I trust in you, I rely on you. One calling a T, a ref. A referee, a T, a touchdown? Is that no? What? I don't know. I think it's a ref. I think it's a referee for a sports game of some kind. Holds in high regard, esteems or exalts, maybe. Oh, engraving instrument, a stylus. There we go. 
So this could be exalt and then wash up. Wash up. What is that? Well, what is this? Oh, cops or a hint to 115 across. 115 across is spelling aid. Oh, this isn't stylus, at least not. So the cops are the 5 0 slang term for the police. So spelling aid will have five O's in it. It's fine, but um but what is this? What is this? Turn off an exit off of a motorway or highway, an exit. Game with L and T-shaped pieces, Tetris. Right, okay. The um pioneering puzzle video game or sort of action puzzle game. What do you call that? Uh it's not really a puzzle because it's sort of a fast-paced reaction thing, but anyway. Uh, designed by Alexei Pagetnov, I think. Anyway, wash up is lave. St oh, style it, style it. Right. Okay. So I, I guess that I guess that all works in there. That isn't. Yeah, I don't know that word as as well. I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure that's entirely my fault. But anyway, so lave is not used. I don't think very often in English, but it's but it's related to what must be a sort of Latin root for wash because that's wash in in a number of languages or a cognate of it. Okay, small screen entertainers are something. R and R settings. Spas maybe R and R rest and relaxation. You could rest and relax in a spa. Small screen entertainers. What I don't think we looked up here yet. Fails to be isn't. It's straightforward enough. Lean against. Rest up against. Rest on. Lean against something. Rest on it. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Old lab burners. Oh, this is a word I know, but I can't bring it to mind offhand. Uh, secretive. Oh, no, wait, sorry. This is Club for Farm Kids or a hint to 97 across. Okay, this will be four something, four letters for Club for Farm Kids. I don't know. Like some plants and physicals. Annual physical, annual plants. Yes, that, that makes sense. Etnas, right, okay. I, I, that is what I thought this was, but I wasn't confident enough to put it in yet. So yeah, it's 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 a device for, for burning things in a lab, but is it named after Mount Etna? The volcano? I'm not sure. I think it might be. I've certainly seen this before, but it's not a it's not a sort of part of my active vocabulary. Certain fossil preserve. Oh, this looks like something, but I can't think what. Uh, locale for a West Coast wine tour. Well, this is Napa Valley, um, famously successful wine growing region in California. Tarpon, certain fossil preserve. Crystal clear. Like, no. Tisk tisk. Um. Tisk. Shame, maybe you'd say. 4-H Club for Farm Kids? What is that? Don't know. Crystal clear. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing what that is. Let's, let's, have we looked at all of these yet? I can't remember. Weightlessness or a hint to 18 across. Okay, well, it will be a number, right? So if this were arid, I mean, you could spell three, but then there wouldn't be room for a letter. Maybe it's not arid. We do need to get a number in there. Reporter's credit. A byline in a newspaper article, for instance. In could be amidst, maybe? No. No, what am I doing? There. I only say that because it fits the number of letters. Um, but it doesn't look great with the crosses particular. Oh, no, no, it does. RNA polymerase is an enzyme. There we go. And bone dry is arid. Okay, well. Oh, zero. <laughs> I didn't try the other possible possible number, zero. That fits with arid. Zero G, weightlessness, of course. 
And to obtain something is to get it. A great deal is tons. And a tin hat, I guess, with the World War I helmets. It's as straightforward as that. Number two on the table is helium. Yes, okay. I remembered that it was a gas, but I couldn't remember what it was. So this is W. Why is it W? I don't understand. Surely this is correct. Unique user. I just don't get what's going on with that one. They're filled with X's. Filled with X's. What does that mean? Keen. Something I'm not understanding over here. Maybe it's that W still wrong somehow. Triple U? Doesn't make any sense. It's not anything. Uh, Google blank. Google Maps, maybe? Oh, well. Sigh. So the brackets around this clue indicate that we're looking for something non-verbal. It could be vocalized. A sigh is vocalized, but it's not language. It's not words. So that's what these brackets indicate. And vegetables that make a fitting addition to alphabet soup. Peas, I guess, because they, uh, they, it's a homophone of the letter of the alphabet, P. And a nice little nod to our letter-themed theme, I guess, our letter-centric theme. The art of music. Arturo Toscanini or something? No, our art would have to be capitalized for that. I was wondering if maybe art is referring to a nickname, but I don't think it is. The art of music. I'm not sure. Bit of high gear and, right, high is capitalized in the manner of a U.S. state abbreviation, which this is the abbreviation for Hawaii. So a lei would be a bit of gear you get from Hawaii, something you wear from Hawaii, a lei, the uh, floral garland. And pouch on a string, a something bag? Pouch on a string, a tea bag would be a pouch on a string. They're filled with X's. Ballets? Ballot, ballots, no, ballots. <laughs> yes, right. You um, fill out a political ballot and you mark X's in your selection. Water bird with a haunting call would be a loon, I suppose. And classic soda brand, Nehi? I'm not confident about, enough, about that to put it in. Um, the art of music. Um... Not sure. Oh, I see. Aha. Looks like that to me. Secretive. Oh, so here's our here are four H's. Looks like something ish. Four H's? What? How are we going to fill that? I don't see where they can all go. Without putting two H's adjacent to one another. Hush. Oh, no, I do. Hush, hush. Right. I was misled because of my... Why did I put an I here? Oh, because I thought the S it just might, must end with ish. That was silly. Hush, hush. Very good. That is four H's indeed. I guess this is Nehi. And then, oh, blank fortune's fool. Oh, I am fortune's fool. Romeo, of course, from Romeo and Juliet. Uh, the art of music. An album cover. Right, of course. Art that accompanies music on an album. Very good. Small screen entertainers. I don't know. Ibn Blank, former Mideast king. Sodder? Or Sod? Uh, let's keep looking around. Responsibility of a personnel director. HR team? The human resources team? I don't know if that's anything. Uh, crystal clear. Right, I already looked at that. Japanese noodle udon. And Singer King with the 2014 hit X's and O's. Uh, Khaki King? Um, not sure. Body feature of a mammoth. A tusk. Well, he, mammoths have tusks. Is that what that is? No, this doesn't look, no, this doesn't look right. Body feature of a mammoth coat? I don't know. I'm going to just, oh, Young Salmon. I don't think I saw that one. But does that mean I know the answer? It doesn't seem to be, be the case. Garden variety. Plain, maybe? Um, I'm not certain about that, but we'll leave it in for now. Holy blank. Holy Toledo. Holy... What would fit in this number of letters? Not sure. 
might be taken to the airport. You might take a car to the airport, I suppose. Uh, spelling aid. Oh, and this is our 5-0. Spelling aid. And there's a question mark. So spelling maybe is in a magic spell. Uh, spelling aid. I'm not sure. I think it's probably a magic spell, but I'm not sure. Well, not a magic spell, but it's something that would be used to cast them, but I don't know what. Baseball announcers call on a home run, and this will have z zero Gs in it. That's not very helpful. They could have applied this to many of the answers in this grid. I wonder if it has some specific... I wonder if it'll mean something particularly clever when we see it. Um... I don't know. Oops. Like hawks. Like hawks. So hawks could be the bird, obviously. They could be people who are sort of generally more in favor of military action. They could mean, I don't know, people who see things clearly. Uh, I'm going to watch you like a hawk, you might say. Vigilant or something like that. Not sure which it is. Or something else I'm not thinking of. Some IRAs. So I don't think this is referring to the Irish Republican Army because, I mean, you could argue there were, I mean, you could, I was going to say because there weren't several IRAs, but you could say that there are, were and arguably are several organizations that lay claim to the mantle of the IRA, but I don't think that's what this means. I think it means some individual retirement accounts, the U.S. financial instrument. Um Um, I don't know, pre-tax or something, but I can't, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, spinach is rich in it. Iron, right? El blank. El Paso, maybe? Let's check these crosses. Jeopardy fodder. Trivia. Okay, well, I don't think it's El Paso, but that's fine. Um, that looks more correct. And I kid you not, no lie or for real... Uh, one of those is too short, the other too long. <laughs> makes some Z, makes some Zs, and crucially makes snores, sleeps, makes some Zs. Rap producers make them. Oh, beats. It might be, oh, it might be taken to the airport a cab. That's much better than car. I just didn't even think about that for more than one second. Rap producers make beats. You take a cab to the airport. Licorice flavor is anise. Oops. And I kid you not, Honest, right, there we go. El Nino, okay, there's another L. So El Nino is a, um, I mean, it's sort of the little boy essentially, but it's a meteorological phenomenon um, that I know from uh, Southern California. Baseball announcers call on a home run. Something in one, I mean, that looks plausible, but done in one? Why is it zero G in particular? Some IRA. Oh, no, it's not done in one. Um, some IRAs are Roth IRAs, which is, is just one of the kinds of IRAs. It doesn't really matter <laughs> for the purpose of this crossword. Um, I think it was named after a Senator Roth who introduced that ver the bill that, that uh, legislated for that variety. Anyway... Something in one. No, no, in one. I don't know. Holy, ter holy terror, that's a phrase. Right, and then, oh, certain fossil pre preserves is tar pit. Of course, yes, because you could have, uh, they could be literally preserved in the tar of a tar pit. Okay, crystal clear. Limpid? Oh, hiring, responsibility of a personnel director. And like hawks. And set on the ground. Put down or something down. Um, I guess plain could be wrong, garden variety. I don't know. It might be right, but, I'm, but it might be wrong. I'm going to delete it for now. Drop of the morning. Drop of the morning, sorry. 
um, dew, a dew drop. There we go. So this is a bit of a, it's a slight little pun on top of the morning, uh, morning greeting, but uh, it's referring to the drop, drops on blades of grass and that sort of thing. Cheer to a matador, ole. This, um, solving the, why did I see this yesterday? I was solving the, the listener crossword this week, which is an extraordinarily difficult uh, cryptic crossword. I was solving it with, with my friend, uh, Lawrence, and um, it was um, unbelievably good and unbelievably <laughs> obscure and difficult this week, but 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 extremely good. Anyway, I think Olay comes from an Arabic word, which would make sense, um, you know, if it, if it came from the... Uh, Islamic period in Spain, but I it didn't that didn't it wasn't in that crossword. But I just sort of randomly was looking up a word that I was trying to figure out for the crossword, and I came across Olay, and it, the etymology I think it said was was Arabic, and I just never knew that before, and I found it very interesting. Anyway, uh, like hawks, what am I not seeing here? Video call glitch, some kind of lag. Like the Xbox X vis-a-vis the Xbox One. Xbox One X vis-a-vis the Xbox One. It's too many X's. Uh, newer. And like Hawks. Oh, pro-war. All right, it is limpid, and it is. it was that meaning of Hawks. So what is this? Oh. Oh, going. Going, going, gone. Right. This is an instruction. Zero G. We're removing the G's from the phrase that had them. So, oinyoinon, oinyonon is nothing. So, so are other ones like this? I mean, some of the, maybe that's why I couldn't figure out the W thing. Baseball announcers call on a home run. So it's going, going, gone. We're zeroing out the G's. Why W? I just don't understand this one. Unique user. Oh, maybe it's just phonetic. Unique user. Whereas the second of two letter U's in the clue is silent. And it's only there because of the Q. Unique user. That must be it. And that kind of, it sort of weirdly fits the letter W, not in the in an extremely strict way, but in the sense that it is strange that we say W in English, even though we spell it with Vs. So it's just, it's sort of purely for our ear. It doesn't actually apply to the way it's written. I don't know. I'm kind of going out on a limb there. There's something going on. But anyway, okay, finally figured that out, I think. Video call glitch, something lag, old blank Connecticut, I don't know. Garden variety, still could be plain. Set on the ground, tap down, not sure. Video call glitch. Why don't I see what, I mean, video lag, audio lag, face lag, is that a thing? Face lag, time lag. Time lag seems more likely. Young salmon. That would allow plain. Okay, so time lag. Plain lag. Oh, sorry, plain, not plain lag. Old blank Connecticut. I don't know that one. Young salmon. That's. It's annoying that I don't know this because speaking of the listener crossword, there was uh, a whole theme a few months ago that was all having to do with phases of salmon life cycles. And a samlet is the name of a young salmon. Sam. S-A-M-L-E-T, which I know from that crossword. Um, but it's not this one. Um, I don't know. A smelt maybe might be one, I think. So, oh, yeah. lay down. You lay something down. You set it on the ground. Maybe it is actually a smelt. Body feature of a mammoth. Uh... A hump or a rump or yeah, even sod, that would be one of the things I wanted that to be. But I don't know which 
small screen entertainers. Uh, I, oh, sorry. I was going to say iPlayer, which is the name. Uh, so here in the UK, the BBC has an, uh, an app you can use to watch all of its content. And it's called the iPlayer, but that doesn't make any sense really. And also it's singular, small screen entertainers. Um, oh, iPods or something? Small screens? iPod, no. I, oh, iPhones, right, sorry. The one that everyone, had, not everyone, had, but I just mean the category of thing, a smartphone that is ubiquitous these days. I don't know why. I guess I guess I just don't think of it as an entertainer. I was trying to think of something more specific to entertainment as opposed to the kind of universal functions that smartphones have at this point. But yep, there it is. iPhones, small screen entertainer is probably the answer. Uh, so that was Hump with the, the mammoth. Okay. Spelling aid. 5-0. 5-0. Well, I mean, you'd think it's going to need one here, right? But Otherwise, how are we going to have enough room for five O's? Five O. Spelling aid. Hmm. Old blank Connecticut. Old Lyme. Dell. Hi-ho, the dairy -o, the farmer in the Dell that has O's in it, but not five. Uh. Hmm. How could we get five O's in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Voodoo doll. This isn't smelt, it's smolt. I didn't remember that properly, I guess. That's a shame. Uh, voodoo doll. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that, getting five O's. Uh, that is half of the letters in voodoo doll are O. Okay, great. The O's and Cheerios are oats, I suppose. Cheerios is oats-based breakfast cereal. And rate is to assess something, is to rate it. Hit 1979 musical in which a character's mistress is one of the main roles. It must be Evita. And University of New Mexico team. Don't know. Bank deals could be loans. And Blank Vetter, lead singer of Pearl Jam. Eddie Vetter, lead singer of Pearl Jam. Oops. This evening is tonight and Singer King with 24 hit X's and O's. Do I know another Singer King? I mean, it looks like L. I mean, it just looks, or Ellie. L or L, yeah. Are there any other ways this can be spelled that could trip me up? This could be... Lobos, Wolves, University of New Mexico team. I mean, let's just try it and see. Yeah, that was it. Great. All right, so what was this? Oh, I don't think we saw this clue. Nigerian city of 3.5 plus million, Ibadan. Okay, so was there anything else we didn't see in the crosses? Maybe, but I don't... I think... Uh, maybe not. I think we got everything. So... What a funny theme. <laughs> I was sort of thinking I it was clear, and then I would find another way to interpret these things. So where are they all? Were any of them downs? I think they were all acrosses. Um, they didn't start happening until here, right? So 2 a.m. was our hint to Sam Adams with two arrangements of the letters a.m. Zero G, well, this, this was the one that was really fascinating was our hint to weightlessness. Well, rather meaning weightlessness, but a hint to going, going, gone, which is a baseball announcer's call on a home run, and we've removed all five Gs. That is just very good. What else did we have? Triple, triple A in at an angle, a very straightforward one. Three A's in at an angle. Double U, the one that still I find slightly perplexing, but I think it's referring to the, the sound of you, which occurs twice in unique user. So I think that's what's going on there. Um, five O is uh, another straightforward one, but in, impressively so. 
in Voodoo Doll. Five O's in Voodoo Doll. Four H's in Hush Hush, another one that was I, was hard for me to imagine was going to be possible, and yet it was. Four H's in Hush Hush Hush. hush. Uh, were there any others? No, those were all of them. So a, a fascinating theme that kind of needed a bit of ongoing thought throughout, even though the basic concept was fairly clear early on. Still needed the, the, the particular way each instance was applied had to be determined on an ongoing basis. So very, very well done. Not not too um, not too unduly challenging, I think, for a Sunday. It was probably pitched fairly well. Let me know how you fared with that. And that's that for the Sunday Puzzle, a good debut by Tina Labati. So with that, we can now read some puzzles. Sorry, read some clues. Well, no, none of these. We can read some comments about clues from yesterday's puzzle. And I'm going to try and do these quickly because there were several and this video is already long. So Old Fooder said, I think Chris didn't go back to 28 across. Stumbles for a speaker. The answer was, was Haws, H-A-W-S, from Hummed and Hawed, presumably. And then Old Fooder also uh, chimed in about fulling, which was the, the craft, the wool processing craft. Uh, and uh, writes, fulling means cleaning wool, apparently. And yes, indeed, I looked it up and it is the process of cleaning wool sort of rinsing cleaning wool by hand no longer necessary because it is handled in a mechanical fashion and as i suspected it is the source of the surname fuller okay <laughs> this is funny anders weinstein said amusingly your mind mashed up the serious peter fonda film uli's gold 1997 with the broad comedy city slickers 2 the legend of curly's gold 1994 yes i definitely did mix those up the eponymous uli short for ulysses was a beekeeper, and the title refers most literally to the honey he produced, though of course it carries metaphorical overtones. For a time, Uli was pretty frequent crossword ease, along with Melville's um Omu and Asta and the like, but as with those others, I haven't noticed it in some time. Yeah, you're right. I do remember that uh, Omu and Asta were common crossword ease. Asta still not infrequently, uh, and but Omu, yes, seems to have declined often, uh, declined considerably. Asta, by the way, the name of the dog in the uh, film and series The Thin Man. And if you've not seen The Thin Man, it is one of the most just purely enjoyable, extremely fun uh, films to watch. It is just great. It's about a sort of husband and wife mystery solving couple, essentially. And it's just, and they just drink martinis all day, every day. And it's just, unbelievably fun. I've only seen the first one, but I noticed the second one is has come to the Criterion channel this month, so I'm going to watch it. Anyway, uh, ZOR95 says, you managed to come up with a football term when you speculated about left back, just the wrong kind of football. A left back is the player stationed furthest left on the back line who's supposed to defend the left flank, though in modern times often have a fair amount of offensive responsibility as well. Thank you for that. And Michael Lister points out regarding the commanders in yesterday's puzzle, the NFL team based in Washington, D.C., dropped their Redskins name and logo, which were considered derogatory towards Native Americans. They were known as the Washington football team for the 2020 and 2021 seasons while they were deciding on how to rebrand the franchise, and the 2022 season will be their first as the Washington Commanders. In the MLB, the Cleveland Indians became the Cleveland Guardians for the 2022 season for similar reasons. Right, I was sort of broadly aware of that but but uh, given my lack of uh, <laughs> my lack of uh, sports i guess knowledge and following i, I didn't uh, wasn't really aware of all the developments so thank you for that and kathleen quinn says regarding chris's comment about chat lines a party line also called a multi-party line shared service line or party wire was a local loop telephone service shared by multiple telephone subscribers from the late 1800s through much of the 1900s when I was a very little kid, my family's telephone was just such a party line. And when you lifted the receiver, you had to make sure that somebody else on the party line wasn't already on the phone before you could make your call. It was a couple of years in my memory before we got our own dedicated phone line. Most party lines were phased out by the year 2000, but reportedly about 5,000 of them still exist, except that almost all of them are dedicated to only one subscriber. So they are party line in name only these days. That's very interesting. 
And then chat lines under the 900 system are typically pay by the minute services, she she points out, which was what I had suspected, but I mixed up my terminology. So thank you for that uh, that very interesting historical note about party lines, which with which I was generally familiar, but maybe not in as much detail. And I did mix them up, as you say. Um, Shebop, according to Bradley, not according to, I'm sure this is correct, Bradley points out that Shebop was a Cindy Lauper single off of her incredible debut album, She's So Unusual. It reached number three on the Billboard charts and was one of four top five hits from that album, along with Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Time After Time, and All Through the Night. Wow, that is some, some run from one album. And finally, Laura Saxon points out that the surname of Nadia, C-O-M-A-N-E-C-I, is pronounced Komenich. And yes, I did. I looked this up. You're, it is pronounced Komenich, as you stated. Almost all of the pronunciation guides on the internet are wrong about that. But I, but I looked it up, and according to a actual Romanian pronunciation um, sort of coach, that is how it's pronounced. So it's, yeah, thank you for that. Anyway, that's that for today's video, and that's that for um, today's puzzle, I suppose. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Monday puzzle. Should go much more quickly than this one. It will be an easy approachable puzzle with an easy approachable theme, we assume. And I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.